Welcome to the second part of the Understanding Espresso series. It's a series where we go through each individual variable in the espresso making process, talk about how it impacts espresso, and talk about how you can use it when dialing in to make your coffee taste better. And today's is ratio. Ratio is a kind of weird variable, but I need to talk about why we talk about ratio and not just liquid in the cup, because that's what we're talking about. Basically, we're saying, how big should my espresso be, and what happens if I make my espresso bigger or smaller? Now, it's called a ratio because the amount of liquid that ends up in your cup should correlate to the amount of ground coffee that you started with. In espresso making, you will often see a ratio given between the weight of the ground coffee and the weight of the liquid in the cup, something like one to two, which would mean 18 grams of ground coffee yields 36 grams of liquid espresso. Now, for a long time, we didn't talk about the weight of liquid espresso. We talked about the volume. When I learned to make coffee, an espresso was 25 to 30 milliliters in size. Milliliters are a volume measurement, and they're kind of useless when it comes to coffee, specifically espresso, for one reason. Crema. That foam that sits atop an espresso is kind of related to how fresh the coffee is. It's some of the CO2 that was generated in the roasting process trapped in a foam on top of the drink. The fresher your coffee is, the more foam you're going to have. So if you're chasing a fixed volume, to get that fixed volume, let's say 50 mils as a double espresso, with very fresh coffee, more of that volume is gonna be gas and foam, basically, and less of it will be liquid, compared to a coffee that is rested or aged a little bit more that has less CO2 in it. This will mean you produce identical looking shots that actually have very different recipes. For that reason, I would strongly recommend weighing the output of your coffee machine, because that way you'll really understand how much liquid you pushed through. And as we'll talk about in a second, this is probably the most critical thing to control to have consistent and repeatable tasting espresso. Before we jump into the practical side of this, I do wanna talk a little bit about how ratios are now used to kind of define different espresso drinks. For example, what is a ristretto? The name comes from the idea that it's a restricted flow, that the coffee flowed through the coffee cake slower. It was less liquid coming through. But, but what exactly is a ristretto? These days, we tend to use ratios to define a ristretto. And it would be anything from, say, 1 to 1 through to 1 to 1.5. Traditional espresso might go in the range of 1 to 1.5 through to 1 to 2.5. Most people would agree that espresso made in Italy, made in the UK, Australia, the US, anywhere really, like modern espresso and even pretty traditional espresso falls pretty much into this range, into this ratio. Above that, if you're producing more liquid from a fixed amount of coffee, you kind of fall into a lungo kind of range, a long coffee. That's anything really above 1 to 2.5, 1 to 3, that kind of way and upwards. These these are not set in stone. These are broadly agreed amongst part of the coffee community, but it's just guidance. If you want to understand what a ristretto is, it at least offers you some sort of definition. Now into the most important part, which is understanding how changing a ratio impacts the taste of the coffee that you're making. Water, in the case of coffee brewing, is a solvent. It's what's gonna dissolve the soluble material, all of the flavor and good stuff in the ground coffee, and pull it out so that we can drink it in the end of it. The more solvent you use, the more extraction you're gonna have. The more water that you pass through that coffee cake, the more soluble material you're gonna pull out. And so it's a very simple way to increase or decrease your extraction, with one pretty important caveat. It's like a, a slider. As you move it up and down, you see a change in the output, but you change two outputs at the same time. While using more liquid will obviously increase your extraction, it will also decrease the strength of your coffee. You'll start to lose body and texture and that kind of richness that makes espresso espresso the more liquid that you push through the coffee. But the more extraction that you'll have. You can put very coarsely ground coffee into an espresso machine, and if you're willing to push enough liquid through it, you'll get a tasty and balanced beverage at the end of it. But it won't necessarily be espresso. You might have had to use a lot of liquid to do that. Practically speaking, we don't see enormous variances in our recipes. We might vary by a few grams rather than 20 or 30 or 40 grams. But a few grams still have an impact. 
it's a very simple, very easy way to manipulate the taste of your espresso. But as I said, at the cost of strength, of texture, of mouthfeel. Now, before I get into how and when, in a practical sense, I would use ratio to tweak my espresso in my dialing in process, well, there's a couple of things we need to talk about. Before we have a quick ad break to talk about our sponsor, I wanna talk about a giveaway that I do. If you are out of work, if you've been laid off, if you just don't have any money right now and you can't access great coffee, then click the link in the description down below. I'll pick 10 people anywhere in the world that I can send coffee to and I will send them some coffee. And I can do that because this video does have a sponsor. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online platform full of thousands of different classes for creative and curious people. It's a place to go to develop new skills or deepen existing passions. For me, I love Skillshare because it lets me indulge all the different aspects of my life that I wanna be creative in. I'm still very much interested in photography right now. I've been taking a fantastic class from Porty Yates about how to frame a great shot, but I'm also getting back into a creative writing project. And so having access to someone like Roxanne Gay's class on creative writing is incredibly inspiring and incredibly useful. But there are classes way beyond the scope of those things. There are culinary classes you wanna learn about coffee, wine, beer, that's there as well as so much more. And for only $10 a month, Skillshare Premium is incredibly affordable. Now the first thousand subscribers to click the link down below in the description and sign up will get 60 days of Skillshare Premium for free. Just imagine what you could learn, what you could accomplish in the next 60 days. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So let's get into the practical side, the nitty gritty of using ratio. For me, I tend to start with a pretty fixed ratio in mind. That's more about the style of espresso that I typically enjoy. So often I'll start in the one to two, one to 2.2 range, but that's just me, that's just my preference. And I'll dial in keeping that actually pretty fixed, pretty constant. Now it's one of those situations where I will generally try and use things like grind to get the extraction that I want instead of just messing around with my ratio too much, unless I'm pretty low on coffee. If I need to pull a shot and I don't wanna rechange my grind setting or purge coffee through my grinder, and I wanna make a small tweak, a small adjustment, that's a great time to use ratio. You'll be surprised, pleasantly I hope, by just how much difference two or three grams more liquid will make in pulling an espresso. Going from say 36 to 39 grams will be the difference between a slight harsh sourness through to something that's more balanced, cleaner, clearer, more complex. It's a shocking change. And you'll understand then why it's so important to use a set of scales when making espresso. Such a tiny change can have such a big impact. Like I said, if I'm making an adjustment or being forced to make an adjustment more than two or three grams, then chances are I'm gonna to start to move away from the textural experience, the style of espresso that I want. So I tend not to go that far. It'll be a little bit too much dilution for me. So I'll tend to use dose or grind and fix another variable in my process. But as a quick and easy way to make a small tweak, I really like adjusting ratio. But I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Does this line up with how you dial in espresso? Does this line up with how you think about espresso? Do you have a totally different way of thinking about it? I would love to hear from you down in the comments below. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.